Glad you showed up this morning. That's going to mean more when Brother Ben uh, uh, gives his message this morning. It is good to see you. Uh, glad you could be with us at the 11 o'clock service here at Farmington Baptist Church. And if you couldn't be here, I know it is kind of a rainy, dreary morning. Glad you could join us on uh, Facebook Live. If you would, stand up and help us sing, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. What a wonderful change in my life has been brought Since Jesus came into my heart I have light in my soul for which long I have sought Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Floods of joy on oh my soul like the sea billows roll Since Jesus came into my heart I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure Since Jesus came into my heart And no dark clouds of doubt now my pathway is sure Since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll, since Jesus came into my heart. I shall go there to dwell in that city I know, since Jesus came into my heart. And I'm happy, so happy as onward I go Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart Floods of joy on my soul like the sea billows roll Since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll, since Jesus came into my heart. All right, again, a good morning, good start this morning. Let's continue on with do Lord. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. I've got a home in glory land that outshines the sun. Way beyond the blue. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. I took Jesus as my Savior, you take him too. While he's calling you. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Do Lord, oh do Lord, oh do remember me. Way beyond the blue. Amen. You can be seated for just a moment. We are glad you came out in the rain and the cold this morning to be in the Lord's house. Uh, we are always at times like this thankful 
uh, for the uh, building. We know the church is the people. Uh, it's a local body of baptized believers, but we're thankful for a church house, and we can come and be dry and worship together. So we're glad you're here with us uh, this morning. I hope you found a bulletin, a lot of announcements and different things going on always in the life of our church. Really good article on the front uh, about why bring a Bible to church. I love Bible apps. I've got those on my phone. Uh, but there's something about bringing a Bible, an actual copy of the Word of God to church uh, that will just help you to get more out of the message. So uh, I thought that was really a good article on the uh, front of the bulletin uh, this morning. Uh, just a few things inside. Uh, Miss Joanne asked me to uh, remember uh, to announce about the poinsettias left over from the uh, Christmas decorations. So sometimes people like to keep those uh, for next year and try to get them to uh, live. Uh, so if you'd like to take any of the poinsettias home, they're back in the old fellowship hall. You'd be welcome uh, to those. Uh, remember tonight, Brother Jamie and the young people will be watching the Chosen series here at the church at 5.30. Really good uh, series about the life of Christ. So that will be tonight at the church at uh, 5.30 on Wednesday nights. Uh, we've got an excellent David Jeremiah study we've been doing on uh, where do we go from here, how tomorrow's prophecies foreshadow uh, today's problems. We're just two weeks in, and I've been a really, really good study on Wednesday nights, so don't uh, miss out on uh, that on Wednesday nights. Financial reports are in the foyer as well, so if you've got any questions, you can see Brother Chris uh, about that. So uh, remember all these things, and keep in mind all those that are on, on the uh, prayer list will share uh, several prayer requests at the end of the service, but you be sure to uh, pray for each other. We're glad you're here this morning. We'll go to the Lord in a word of prayer and ask the Lord to uh, be with us and to uh, bless us this morning. Brother Pee Wee, won't you lead us in prayer if you will, brother? Amen. Amen. Brother Greg, you'll come. All right. If you would, uh, stand back up and uh, join us. A couple of my favorite songs coming up. Let's start out with uh, How Great Is Our God.
And Brother Ben's going to preach from the uh, book of 1 Samuel this, uh, this morning, a, a really good, uh, a good lesson that he's going to share with us this morning. All right, and Miss Christina does a, a really a great job on uh, an old hymn, Blessed Assurance, and you're, you're going you're to be blessed by that. All right, let's finish up this morning with Lord, I Need You. I was just asking Greg what to do with the mic because in the nine o'clock service, I had my first mic drop right over there in the floor. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. 
breathe, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst off my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. Thank you, Miss Christina. We appreciate you singing for the Lord. Uh, great old hymn of the faith by Fanny Crosby. And everybody that's saved has a story and should have a song. That's a great hymn of uh, the faith. We appreciate her uh, singing for the Lord this morning. We're going to be in 1 Samuel today. 1 Samuel chapter number 14. 1 Samuel 14 verses 8 down through verse 11. We began a series uh, for the new year, a series for the month of January. We started last Sunday. Uh, this is the second one in the series, How to uh, Get More, Making More Out of Life in 2022. How can we get more out of our life? Uh, we, we talked about, you know, it's not good to just have resolutions because we'll often break a resolution and just forget about it. We don't need resolutions. We need new routines in life. And so we're thinking about some things that will help you not to squander the life that God has given you. Life's a gift from God. But to make the most out of your life that you can look back a year from now and say no matter what happened through the storms literally or physically no matter what happened through the, the trials I went through 2022 was a good year God blessed in my life last Sunday we talked about uh, setting some goals the 12 spies how Joshua and Caleb and it's good to have some goals and I hope you've got some things that you want to achieve spiritually speaking not just exercise more, lose some weight or whatever it may be. But I hope you've got some spiritual things that you want to achieve in your life and your family and your church in 2022. Now, today we're going to pick up with the second thing, how to get more out of our, our life in 2022. From this story here in 1 Samuel chapter 14, let's begin in verse number 8. You can put your ribbon here, we're going to stay right here. 1 Samuel 14, verse number 8, the Bible says... Then said Jonathan, the prince, then said Jonathan, Behold, we will pass over unto these men, and we will, when the Bible says the word discover, it's the idea of we will show ourselves. He says we will discover, we will show ourselves unto them. And if they, the Philistines, say unto us, Tarry, then we, unto we come to you, then we will stay still in our place, and we will not go up to them. But if they, the Philistines, say to us, come up unto us, then we will go up. 
For the Lord hath delivered them into our hand, and this shall be a sign unto us. And look at verse 11. And both of them, Jonathan and his armor bearer, discovered, showed themselves unto the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines said, Behold, the Hebrews come forth out of the holes where they have hid themselves. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the Lord's day. Father, thank you for this new year you've given us. Father, we're thankful for each family, each person that's here in God's house today. And I pray, Lord, that the word of God would encourage us and challenge us. Lord, speak to our hearts today through the scriptures, through the Holy Spirit. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins. We pray that Jesus will be lifted up through every part of the service. In his name we pray. All right, as we think about how to get more uh, out of life uh, in 2022, 20, uh, the, the message today, our second message in the series, last week was setting some goals. This week is the idea of showing up. That's the title where Brother Greg mentioned, showing up. If you want to get more out of your life, you need to show up. And I'm going to share with you some areas in your life where you need to show up. If you're taking notes, I'll give you three A's this morning uh, for alliteration. I want you to see, number one, the attitude. As we think about Jonathan and his armor, they showed up to fight the Philistines. The attitude, number one, of showing up. I want you to see, number two, uh, number two, the authority. God's Word commands us to show up the authority for showing up. And then I want you to see, number three, the after effects. What happens when you show up for God in your life? The after effects. So the, uh, the attitude of, the authority for, and the after effects of showing up. Uh, now, it's always, I, I've always loved to preach from the, the stories of the Bible, the narratives. And uh, sometimes people wonder, well, Brother Ben, is that really, really good preaching? But you know, Jesus preached like this. You remember one time Jesus looked at the crowd of people and Jesus said, Remember Lot's wife. What did Jesus do? He took an Old Testament story when Lot and his wife, they fled Sodom and Gomorrah and Lot's wife looked backwards and she turned into a pillar of salt. And what was Jesus saying? Don't go backwards. Don't look back. Keep going forward for Jesus. Remember Lot's why? And so I want to do that same thing. I want us to take a true Old Testament story. Joshua, or we find Jonathan and his armor bearer in the war with the Philistines. How they showed up and God made a difference in, your life, in their life. And how if you show up, and we're going to think about three areas this morning. If you'll show up for church, if you'll show up for your family, and if you'll show up in your community, God will make a difference in your life and the lives around you. So that's what I want to think about uh, today. Let's look at the scriptures and see what God has to say. Number one, the attitude of showing up. You notice there in verse 11, the both there is, of course, Jonathan and his armor bearer. They discovered they showed themselves under the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines looked and they were amazed. They said, the Hebrews have come forth out of the holes where they have hid themselves. Now there's a war going on in these chapters between the Israelites and the Philistines. And when you read chapter 13 and chapter 14, the, the Israelite soldiers have been hiding. They've been hiding in caves and thickets and woods, anywhere they can find a hiding place. Even King Saul in verse 2 is, is laying down. He's under a shade tree, under a pomegranate tree. Everybody is sitting down instead of showing up. They're hiding. They're out of the fight. But we find in verse 11, Jonathan and his armor bearer, they said, we're going to show up. We're going to stand up. We're going to do something for God. Everybody else may be hiding and may be uh, sitting down on the job, but we're going to show up and do something for God. And you can see the application, can't you? God wants us to show up. We need to have the attitude of Jonathan. I'm going to show up today. I'm not going to hide in the caves. I'm not going to be out in the thicket. I'm not going to be laying down under a pomegranate or a shade tree. I'm going to show up. And think about those three areas this morning. The church. How important. And it's really the least thing we can do. But how important is it for us to show up at church, to show up for, on God, at God's house on God's day, show up at church. And we've sort of lost that. Now, I've been pastoring. It's amazing how time gets by. But this year will begin the 25th year 
that I've been pastoring. And I look back over these past 24, 25 years, beginning 25th this year, and I look back and we, we've seen so many faithful people. We've lost that World War II generation. They, they've about all gone. I'm reading, I think there's one Medal of Honor a winner left alive from World War II. That generation has gone on uh, to be with God. We've lost those people who are so faithful to God. They, they, they had that, act, and we've got to get that back in our churches. And, and many of you have that. We, we've all got to have that. That on God's day, I'm going to show up. I thank the Lord. My mom and dad impressed that. They taught me and my younger brother Jay, if it's God's day, you're going to be in God's house. It didn't matter what was going on. I shared in the morning service. I remember when I was probably... Eight, nine, ten years old, somewhere in there, still a young boy on the farm there in Todd County. And I remember it was probably around November. And uh, Dad, the tobacco came in order. That's when it gets moist enough. Some of you know what I'm talking about where you can strip it and it came in order. And he had to, the tobacco had to be taken and sold, taken to the warehouse on Monday. And I remember on Saturday, we stayed up later than I'd ever stayed up. We started that, that morning. We stripped all day. And it was just me, my mom and dad. My brother's just a few years old over there asleep on a blanket somewhere in the stripping room. And we stayed up probably well past midnight. Way late all day, had to get it done so we could haul it off on Monday. But guess what we did on Sunday morning? Mom and Dad got us up and they took us to church. Though my grandfather had passed that on to my mom and, and my dad and my mom passed that on. And thank the Lord my brother's got that same attitude today with his family. On God's day, show up. Everybody's got a place in church. You need to have that place be in the church. That's where God would have you to be. Show up for church. What about your family? How many people do we have today that, that are they're just absent? They're absent fathers, absent husbands, absent wives, absent children. Uh, they're just a wall. God would have us to show up. If you're a husband, God wants you to be a good husband. If you're a wife, God would have you to be a good wife. If you're a child, God would have you to be a good, good son or daughter. Show up for your family. Uh, God wants us to show up and you can make a difference. Our community, man, we're, we're praise the Lord, and many have been so good in this area. Show up. If you're an employee, man, I'm going to show up for work and, and give a hard day's work for an honest day's pay. And helping people, being a good neighbor, show up. We need to have the right attitude, just like Jonathan. Everybody, remember, everybody else is in the thickets. They're in the caves. They're laying down on the job underneath the tree. But Jonathan and his armor bearer, we don't even know the armor bearer's name. But Jonathan says, we're going to do something for God. We're going to show up and be counted and do what God would have us to do. So you notice they had the right attitude. And if God's going to bless you, if you're going to have God's blessings, if you're going to get more out of life, now, I told you last week, if you aim for nothing, you'll hit it every time. And if you just want 2022 to just be the same old year and just to, you know, just kind of uh, just go along, just get in your rut that you've always been, you can do it. But if you want to get more out of your life, make your life count, we need to show up for God. So we see the right attitude. Jonathan and his armor, they show up, they come out of the hiding, they come out of the, the woods, the hills, the thickets, the, the caves. And they show up. But notice number two, the authority for showing up. Now the reason I read verses 8, 9, and 10. You notice the last part of verse 10, 1 Samuel 14. Jonathan says he wants to make sure they do what God wants them to do. And so he says in verse 10, If they say to us, come up unto us, then we will go up. For the Lord hath delivered them into our hands. This shall be a sign unto us. Jonathan shows up. He stands up. He says, I'm going to do what God wants me to do. And if God wants me to fight the Philistines, I'm going to fight them. He has this attitude. I'm going to do something for God, but I want to do what God wants me to do. He, 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 he's not just hiding in the hills. He's wanting to do something, but he's wanting to do what God wants him to do. We need to have that same type of authority when we're going to do something what does the Bible say about it so about standing up showing up for church does the Bible say anything about that absolutely the book of Psalms tells us in Psalms chapter 122 verse 1 the psalmist said I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The Bible is the authority. People ask me, Brother Ben, how do you know the will of God? 
You don't know God's will through dreams, through visions. People say, well, I had a funny feeling. That's not how you know the will of God. You know the will of God from the Word of God. I want to tell you, God's Word says we should show up for church. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25, let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. God wants us to show up for church. We've got the authority. The Bible says when the church doors are open, if you're saved, you ought to be in church. It's good for you. It'll be a blessing for you. Show up at church. We have scripture for that. It's, we have God's authority. What about the home? Does the Bible say anything about Husbands, absolutely. Wives, yes. Children, you better believe it. The Bible says that husbands are to love their wives as Christ loved the church. Now how much does God love you? Does God love you when you just do good things? God loves us unconditionally. God doesn't just love me being if I'm not sinning that particular hour. That per no, God loves me all the time. And I want to tell you, God loves you all the time. God's love for you is unconditional. And the Bible says that the husband is to love the wife like Christ loved the church. Uh, that, that's what the Bible says. The Bible says the wife is to reverence, have the proper respect for her husband. The wife is to submit to her husband. What's that mean? When her husband is following God, she follows him. Now if her husband's not following God, she's got a higher authority. She follows God instead of him. But when the husband is doing right, the wife submits. The, the husband is to love the wife. The wife is to reverence and submit to the husband. The children... The Bible says are to obey their parents, are to honor their mother and father. It's so important. It's not just in the Old Testament. Ephesians chapter 5 and 6 tells us all these things. We've got authority. It's time for people, if we're going to get more out of life, hey, in this new year, let's start showing up. That's the least we can do. Let's show up for church. I'm going to be at church on Sunday. I'm going to be at my family. I'm going to show up and be a husband. God wants me to be the father, be the mother, be the child. I'm going to show up. What about in the community? Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. As you have opportunity, do good to all men, especially to those of the household of faith. There's scripture that we should help people that we can be that light and be that salt that God wants us to be we need to show up and we're going to get more out of life for our church for our community for our family now here's the thing we it's easy to make excuses it's easy to say but well preacher I, I see what you're saying I kind of like part of it but no because if you read chapter 13 and chapter 14, and I'm not going to do an in-depth study, be interesting to do it on a Wednesday night sometime. But if you read it, you find Jonathan could have had, he could have had a ton of excuses. The, the Pharisees or the, uh, the Philistines, they had the high ground. Man, you know when you're fighting a battle, you want the high ground. The Philistines had uh, Jonathan and the Israelites, they had them outnumbered. The Philistines had better weapons. They're, the Bible says that Jonathan and his father, King Saul, had the only two swords in the whole army. So you imagine this. You're Jonathan, and you look up there, and the Philistines have got the high ground. Every one of them's got a sword or a spear. You've got one sword. Your armor bearer's just got a hoe or a club or a stick or something. You'd have every reason to say, man, we're outgunned. We're outmanned. They've got the high ground. We need to just quit and just, just hide in the woods somewhere. But Jonathan says, I'm going to show up. I'm going to do something for God. And how easy is it to make excuses? People say, well, I'd like to show up for church, but I'm just so busy. Now think about what you're saying. You're saying, God, I love you. God, I'm thankful you saved me. God, I'm thankful that you made a difference in my life. But God, I'm too busy to come to your house on Sunday." Doesn't make any sense. We would never tell God that. No, that, that's not a, a valid excuse. People say, well, I, I, I'm scared to come to church. And I understand some people are really scared. But I'm amazed. I hear people tell me, well, Brother Ben, I'm scared to come to church. But I see them at Walmart. I see them at ball games. I see them at the dollar store. And, and I'm like... Consistency. Don't, don't make excuses. And people have always been doing this. Some of you can remember probably 13 years ago 
Me and old brother Jeff McAlpin sung that song one Sunday by the Kingsman. Some of you have never heard it, but a lot of you know the song. Remember that good song the Kingsman would sing? Excuses, excuses. You hear them every day. Now the devil, he'll supply them. If church, you stay away. When people come to know the Lord, the devil always loses. So to keep them folks away from church, he offers them excuses. If you never heard that song, you look it up on YouTube. It's full of a lot of truth. And so often we make excuses. What well, this or that, and we don't show up like God wants us to. What about the home? People say, well, well, it's hard. Brother Ben, I, I'd like to be the husband I want to. I'd like to be the father, but, but, but it's just so hard. But it's what God wants you to do. You made that commitment to your spouse. You made that commitment to your family. And listen, I know we can't change the past. I'm not talking about going backwards. But for the future, you honor those commitments that you've made. You be the spouse. You be the parent. You be the child God wants you to be. Don't let the devil tell you, well, the grass is greener over here on the other side of the fence. You'll get over on the other side of the fence and you'll make a mess of your life and somebody else's too. No, you honor what God wants you to do. You stand up and show up for your family, for our community. We look around and there's ways to be involved. People say, well, that's none of my business or that's somebody else. But remember, Jesus said, love your neighbor. And they said, well, the Pharisees said, well, who's, who's a neighbor? And Jesus gave the story of the Good Samaritan. Your neighbor is not the fellow that lives beside you, but the neighbor is somebody who has a need. And as God brings needs in your life, real needs, we seek to help people to be the light and salt God wants us to be. Now here's the last thing, stay with me. The after effects. If you show up at church, you show up for your family, you show up for your community, it'll make a difference. It'll make a difference for the new year. And when Jonathan and his unnamed armor bearer, they showed up, they, they had authority. God said, we want you to go and fight. And they go and fight, and guess what happens? Look at verse 22 in the chapter. Chapter 14, verse 22. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 14, 22, Likewise, all the men of Israel which had hid themselves in Mount Ephraim when they heard that the Philistines fled, even they also followed hard after them in the battle. When Jonathan and his armor bearer showed up, it made everybody else want to show up. You see, you ought to circle the second word in verse 22, the word all. Likewise, all. That's the people who have been hiding in the thickets, hiding in the, in the holes, in the caves, in the woods. They all came out of hiding and began to do something for God. When you show up, here's what it does. It influences other people. They, when you, you show up, it encourages your children, your grandchildren, your friends uh, to, to show up as well. Hey, that person's coming to church and man, God's working in their life. And They're not the man, they're not the woman, they're not the person they used to be. They've got something, I want what they got. I want to show up too. When we show up, it encourages other people to show up. That's why it says in, in, in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 20, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting, encouraging one another. By just being here at the Lord's house, you're being an encouragement to those around you. We want to always encourage people. Go forward for Jesus. Don't go backwards. When you do the things that God would have you, it encourages your family. It encourages those in the community to step up. It, it helps other people. That's why the Bible says in Ecclesiastes that two are better than one. That's true in marriage. That's true of the church. That's true in our community. It encourages others. But that, not only the encouragement of the after effects, but you see how the battle went. Verse 13. Now you got Jonathan, he's got a sword, his armor bearer's probably got a stick. And in verse 13, the Bible says, Jonathan climbed up upon his hands on his feet. Remember, the Philistines got the high ground, and his armor bearer after him. And they fell, the Philistines fell before Jonathan, and his armor bearer slew after him. And they won the battle. They won the victory. When you show up, God will begin to do things in your life. Now, don't you misunderstand me this morning and say, well, all right, Brother Ben, I'm going to show up for church and, and that's all. I'm not saying just be a warm body in 2022 for your community, your family, or your church. But here's what will happen. 
when you show up at church, something amazing happens. I mean, God designed the church. Man didn't make it. Jesus said, I will build my church. And here's something amazing. You come to church and you can be in a bad mood. You can be arguing. You can be fighting. But something amazing happens when you come into church and we start singing these songs. Lord, I need you. How great is our God. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. We start singing these songs and we start praying together and you start hearing the word of God, the sword of the Spirit, the hammer that breaks the rock into pieces. You start hearing the word of God preached and all of a sudden you're, you can, you, that heart can be as hard as, as a rock. It can be callous but all of a sudden you start warming up. All of a sudden God starts working on you and God starts dealing with your life and, and God starts showing you what he would have you to do but it starts with showing up. When you show up and then God begins to lead you to greater things as you hear the word of God preach and the spirit begins to work in your life. When you show up for your family and you heard the word of God and you say, I'm going to show up for, as a husband, as a wife, uh, as a mother, a father, as a son or daughter and I'm going to do what God tells me to do. Brother Ben didn't tell me to do that. The church didn't tell me to do that. God told me to do that in the scripture. And you start doing what God has told you to do in the Bible. All of a sudden, people start, got to start blessing. People say, well, I want to have a better marriage. If you'd listen to God, you could. I want to have a better family. Listen to the Word of God. Got to start working in your life. But it starts. The whole key. You read these two chapters. Everybody's hiding in the thickets, in the caves, in the holes in the ground. And one man and his friend, Jonathan is our bear. We're going to show up. And by showing up, God made a difference in the life. What about you? We're still in the very beginning of a new year. 2022. It can be just the same old year. You can squander it. You can waste it. We've got a limited amount of years. God gives us time. It's, we've just got a little bit. It passes away and it's gone. But if you want to make the most out of the years, out of the time God's given you, stand up. Show up for church for your family, for your community. But it always starts, doesn't it, with being saved. The beginning, we never want to get that cart before the horse, do we? It always starts with salvation. That time in your life where you realize you're a sinner, Jesus is a Savior, and you cry out to Him and ask Him to save you. So I'm going to pray in just a moment. We're going to have a hymn of invitation. If you've never been saved, if you're not a Christian, Man, what, a, what the best way to begin this new year is by being saved, by knowing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Cry out to Jesus. If you want to be saved today, you can be saved. If you feel that still, small voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart. But if you have been saved, you say, Preacher, I remember when I got saved. Maybe it was last year. Maybe it was 20 years ago. Brother Ben, I remember. Then you show up for church, for your family for your community. And a year from now, you'll look back and you'll be amazed at how God has blessed your life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you.